Welcome back. It's time for Operation Swift Knight. We are heading down to train us up some rookies and some specialists and lance corporals. Uh, it's the swamp. What do you want me to tell you about it? It's a swamp, people. I'm, I'm not going to tell you about the map before I click the launch mission button. Uh, it's It's got sparse cover, it's got trees, it's got mildew. I like this map. I'll tell you more when we get down there. Let's open the ramp. Copy, Big Sky. Strike one is clear to attempt the breach. So here we are. Um, I like this map. I like it a lot. Uh, I believe this is another one of those three-way maps where you can either spawn here, here, or over here all the way. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot. Um, wait. I think I've already told you guys about this map. Yeah, haven't I already told you guys how much I love this rock log thing? Yeah, I've told you guys about the rock log. You know this map, this is where we did the drones, it's just instead of being at night, uh, this is at midday now. Yeah, this is the drone map with Scuba Man on it. Alright, I don't need to go into too much detail about what's great about this map then, we can just start heading straight for it. So once again, we're going to take this nice rock log covered approach. Uh, we're going to try and move fast to preserve as much meld as possible. Uh, and hopefully we're going to come out on top. We've got a gunner, we've got an infantry, we've got an assault. We haven't got a scout to cancel Overwatch of Lightning Reflexes, so we're going to have to rely on the gunner and uh, smart movement, basically. So we might want to be a little bit slower than we usually are when we're sprinting uh, breakneck for meld. Which means, as tempting as that move is, I shouldn't make it. It's no fun. So let's move up to these uh, both ways covers instead. Oh, there they are, there they are. Alright, well just as well that I took it slow, I guess. Now, no overwatch on either of these floaters, that's very interesting. That means I've got a lot of freedom to move here. I could run and gun my assault here uh, for a very easy kill, but if I activate another pod on the right, it's game over for that assault. Although I do have a, I do have a, I do have a smoke, and I do have a suppression still ready to spring into action to cover the assault. So, so it's not as risky as you'd think. But still, we've got nothing but rookies to back me up. Uh, apart from the suppression, it's not the greatest thing you've ever heard of, is it? Uh, if only, if only Volatile had one more mobility, I could just take this uh, heavy cover here and not worry about it. But it's not to be. Uh, but I do have an easy flank on the other guy as well, no, let's not forget. So what might be safer is just to take a bunch of flank shots on this one, suppress this guy, he's probably not going to do anything or go anywhere, uh, and then we'll move to kill him next time. Uh only problem with that is it's really quite difficult in this scenario uh, to have enough cover to put everyone in. Um, I mean, I can sit right back here, but I don't think I'm going to have a flank shot from there. So what I might have to do instead is run and gun my assault up to this position. That's a step out flank. SOF for short. Uh, and then we're going to have one more rifle shot. A uh, chance to kill the flank floater if that shotgun doesn't kill him. That's going to leave me in quite a tricky position if the shotgun doesn't hit or kill that floater. But if it does, then I've got the suppression on this guy. That range bonus is still going to make it quite possible for the assault to be hit by this floater, so we need to be careful. But I think all in all, mm. I think all in all, it's probably safer than dashing right. But the shotgun is much more likely to kill this one in one turn, and if we suppress this floater, uh, we don't have to worry about his big health for now, and then he's very easy if he stays in that position to flank next turn. Which he won't. He won't do that because he'll be flanked by the shotgunner, so he'll move. I'll get an opportunist LMG shot on him, and then if I put all my rookies in overwatch, they'll all get opportunist shots, well not opportunist, they'll, they'll all get pretty good overwatch shots against them as well. The more I think about it, the more I like the idea of flanking really hard. Oh, are you kidding me? I can't even... <laughs> All this time I've been talking about that, I can't even do it. Alright, well that makes it kind of a, a, a foregone conclusion then. We take the flank. We take the flank, you know. Sorry guys, there was a lot of explanation that in the end wasn't actually necessary. But, interesting thought experiment. 
think about that next time you're in a similar situation, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so 73% is not the best odds you've ever heard of. But it's all we got right now. So let's take a little old shot and pray for success. Oh yeah! Nice job. That is some good work, Drake. Alright, so now things continue according to the best case plan, which is we get into position on this guy, on it, and we prepare to flank him next turn. I'm gonna put my gunner in position. On my way. He's ready to suppress. My other troops are ready to flank. Okay. For future reference, I can see him, but I couldn't have flanked because this ramp would have stopped me from stepping out. Uh, and now... Hmm. If I wanted to be extra fast, I could move a rookie to flank him, put everyone in overwatch. But then, you know, that's going to force him to run the overwatch because he's flanked. And then, if the overwatch misses and doesn't kill him, he's not going to be suppressed and he takes an easy shot at my troops. So let's play it safe. Let's make him think he's in control and just keep him pinned. Aye, aye. aye, aye. You stay right there. You too. Yeah, you hunker like a little bitch, because that's exactly what I fucking want you to do. Damn right. Oh, I hear flooded. Oh, I hear sectors on the right. Jeez. Okay, so I hear sectors on the right, so we kind of want to start thinking about that. So I'm just going to use my shotgun to finish this up quick. Boom. Get hugely wrecked. Now I think if I run up straight to the UFO and ignore these sectoids on the right, that's going to get me more meld quicker because you've got one meld canister there, there's probably another one near the UFO, they seem to drop near the UFO, uh, logically enough. So I feel like rushing the UFO here is going to get me more meld, uh, and that's going to probably let me avoid the sectoids anyway. Who best to take a rush when you're not sure that you're not going to activate any aliens? One, two, three, four... Well, obviously a rookie's the best man for the job. Make that double time work, girl. Make it work. All good. All good. We are not being punished for our huge greed. Again. Je France. Je France. Alright, I hear those sectors coming up behind us. They are following the sounds of gun battle. Now, if we wanted to overwatch trap him, we could pretty easily, but you know what? I have got a taste for meld first and foremost, so we're going to keep rocketing up as fast as we can. It's also good that hearing those sectoids to the right means if we assume we're pretty standard in our luck and we're facing two pods on this abduct uh, abduction, on this UFO, aye, aye, it means it should just be the outsider. Which means it's not too dangerous to just dash straight up here and save yet more time. There. I'm rolling. Come on, rookies, let's make it happen. Yeah, I wonder if commentating it just makes me greedier because I've never seen myself this fast before. Let alone you guys seen me this fast before. I just really got a hunger for that meld tonight. I don't know why. Maybe UFO missions usually aren't too hard. Maybe I've just got something to prove here. But I, I want that goddamn meld. Moving to position. Alright. I'm gonna get it too. I'm gonna get that goddamn meld. With some uh, perilous dashes. Hmm. How how dash do you dash? I reckon I can dash to there. I reckon that's all right. Let's see if anyone else can make that dash because I'd like to use the battle scanner to look behind me. Yes, Toothcake's got it in the bag. Uh, I would prefer if Toothcake was not doing it that way, though. Because he's liable to activate left side pod uh, that way. Alright, Toothcake, maybe we'll just put you on this corner then. Hey, works for me, buddy. You can probably get that meld next turn. Let's just get everyone else moving now. 
moving on that juicy UFO. Mm, it's gonna taste good. Can you can you not go around the left? Can you can you not? Okay, fine. Moving to position. Fine, go around the left. Do what you want. Now, we've reconned that there's nothing on the right, so it's safe to kind of just move up here. That and that location. puts us one turn closer to breaching this UFO, which is good, because we're about to get this meld and that's liable to trigger an outsider. We want to be ready here. On the move. So let's get our mans quite in position. I'm rolling. Except for little old, uh... Well, you know what? I was going to scan with Hypergeek, but if we move Hypergeek down, then we're guaranteed no one's going to spot those sectoids, which means they're going to have an even worse time catching up to us. Except for the melt. Forgot about the melt. Which, by the way, I am definitely getting. Get it! Get the melt! Alright, there's that outsider. We saw that coming. And you know, funnily enough, the benefit of activating him from the outside here has actually made him dash into a pretty shitty position. With some AP grenade work, which I have two of, this guy's as good as dead as long as I get my shotgunner in there and deal decent damage. Heading out. And that's exactly what we're doing, so let's do it. My shotgun is going to need to be right here to be safe from the AP grenades while still uh, getting the flank. Moving to firing position. That's affirmative. And luckily we've heard those sectoids, so we're not worried about the sectoids sitting here and punishing me for a risky dash run and gun into unexplored territory. Take a shot and take a bow. <laughs> I felt that coming. Strange aliens. We already know that killing them won't provide anything of use to us. Alright, I'm hungry for more. Give me those sectoids. I am ready for a light snack. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The taste of victory. God, UFO missions are an ego boost. Alright, now those sectoids are close, but they're not that close. Unless they're hiding in concealment. That's something to stay aware of here. But ideally, we'll head back up into the high ground here. Maybe even this tree. Use this to overwatch them as they come in. So let's get people ready for that. Awo, I would like you to get yourself ready for that. Okay. Oh, you're the man, Awo. You're, you're going to go just where I want you to be. I love it. Heading to that location. Moving. So yeah, don't worry about it, guys. Uh, you know, Drake's just in here one man in the outsider. One womaning, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Got it covered. The rest of you just do your thing. And here they come. Three sectoids, it's a pretty average sized pod. We've got a leader in the back there who's going to have low profile. But they've split themselves up and that's going to make them easier to exploit. And trust me, I, uh, I welcome sectoids allowing themselves to be exploited. That's fine with me. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Now, it looks like we can take our time because I don't see any other meld canisters. Uh, but you never know when there's more hiding out on the map, so there's no harm in being fast as well. We'll take a reasonable combat pace towards these sectoids. What's a good combat pace in this scenario? Well, first let's move up AO into uh, the position we wanted them in. No reason not to. Normally I'd be worried about this sectoid flanking me, but I'm pretty con uh Pretty confident in my ability to both flashbang and suppress him this turn, so I'm not too worried about that. Or, you know, at the very least, suppress him. That's 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 more than good enough for me. So if you'd be so kind, Volatile, as to prove me right, I don't think you can quite flashbang him, actually, but you can suppress him. And with the Overwatch already scaring him, that's going to be enough. Cell, you... Ah, having trouble carrying that weapon. You are in a squatting stance if I've ever seen it. I'm on the move. Okay, so go ahead and move up. You're going to suppress. You're going to start the long road of flanking this little son bitch. And between the squad, we're going to have a good time with these sectoids. Where can I get more people on online here? 
Yeah, someone on the right could really add to this flanking trifecta quite nicely. Perhaps that's the next move. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's get ready on the right and let's really L-shape them. Nothing beats L-shaping for flanks. And uh, you know what, Drake? Uh, you've done a great job in there, but now we need you out here, so... Get your goddamn butt moving. Off. Son of a bitch. There's that suppression. Keeping him down, Commander. Keeping him down, Commander. Uh, uh, hmm. we, uh, we, uh, I was gonna say we may as well move up here because Volatile can't see anything from her position. Yeah, why not? Get her ready to actually do something next turn. And AOA with the Overwatch to keep this guy truly uh, pinned. Mind meld, do what you want, I don't care. And the worst they can really do to us is a psychic attack. Which would be what I'd imagine. No, he's gonna shoot like an idiot. You're an idiot. So the battle scanner tells us a lot of useful information here. It tells us uh, that we've got a, well, actually. Volatile tells me too that we've got a guy in Overwatch on the right. We've seen the mind meld pop off from here, and we know there's only three sectoids. It means there's no one on Overwatch here to stop us. We can run right up and totally exploit this sectoid. That's probably going to take the form of a flashbang. But of course, if we run up into half cover and flashbang, it leaves us open to the mind melder if the mind melder runs up next turn and takes a shot. So it's not the be all end all strategy here. Now, what would the be-all, end-all strategy be here? Well, can my gunner make it to volatile spot? No. Uh, what would really be the tops here is if I could get a suppression on this sectoid. That would allow me to move my people up to engage. Oh, I could... Oh, I, could oh, I can't take that spot, but I could take a spot with volatile. Uh, the problem is this log rock is going to block my shot because that's full cover. He's actually in quite a good spot there. He's a cunning little bastard. It's possible due to the way stepping out works that I could get a flank shot from here. In fact, it's quite likely. But the log rock itself, if I was any further, it's going to stop me. And even suppressed, uh, that guy is liable to then turn around and flank me, I think. So uh, that's probably not the hottest idea we've ever had. Now, with no meld on the cards, it might be wise to just wait until that guy's not on Overwatch. And in fact, laying an Overwatch trap of our own here isn't a terrible idea. Nor is having an Assault uh, come and get nice and close and ready for a running gun next turn. All of these are pretty good options. I'm going to vacate this position for the Assault. I'm going to run up and get ready. Boop. I'm ready for your shit. My assault's ready for your shit. Oh, he's hella ready. Look at this. Moving out. Drake is ready to kill a bitch next turn. Toothcake is ready to hunker down. <laughs> Great job, Toothcake. We've got a suppression to keep him pinned. And we are going to lay an overwatch trap for this guy on the right. That's simultaneously keeping the left guy pinned while intimidating the right guy. You're going to hear me talk at no end about intimidating the AI. It's hard to intimidate robots, but uh, it's easier than you think because the AI in XCOM is quite well done. They, uh, they really do respect your firepower and your overwatch, and it's quite possible to intimidate them. Now that mind melder is in a good position to uh, stop me from doing any crazy flanks, but... Uh, I could potentially do a half, half log, uh, shotgun if I had to. But it leaves me quite open to the rest of them. So I'm not sure I want to do that. Instead, I might want to just keep moving up here. Keep moving up, keep getting ready for the big strike, and then make the big strike. Uh, one thing to note is that I could dash around here. She's going to be invisible. That's going to allow me to kill the Mind Melder, or at least flashbang the Mind Melder pretty soon. Oh, I can do the same with the Assault. That's even better. 
the assault can run around and get the mine melder. Or even better, the assault can just run up and kill this sectoid next turn without running gunning, then run and gun the mine melder next turn. And I could also run my rookie to flashbang the mine melder. Oh yeah, I like this. I like this, this is good. But instead, we could just run up and take a 50% here. There's no shame in that with a shotgun. And with suppression and flashbang available, uh, it's not exactly risky, you know? Yeah, I, I think that could work. Let's move up. Mm, now I'm in sight of that other guy, and this 52% is going to leave me exposed to him. So I like it less now. But it could work. No, damn it, Beagle. Play it safe. There's no meld on the map. Just play it slow. Tell you what. I'll pop one of the flashbangs. Keep him extra pinned. We will take a hunker with the assault. We'll keep that suppression going with uh, Cell. Oh, actually, I don't want to keep the suppression going because Cell's running out of ammo. I'd rather reload in this case. You know, one thing I haven't been doing is taking free shots with the infantry because I've been trying to keep his ammo up. And I've been waiting for them to, uh, to like actually take a move. But I may as well take a free shot here. Hey, good shot, Ivor. That's going to make it a lot easier to shoot him. Although the mind meld is going to mess up that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'd like to take... Uh, I'd like to take a reload here. Ready to rock. Continue the overwatch. <laughs> Waiting for this little kid. Affirmative. Covering now. And Hyperkeek, since he doesn't seem very willing to move around, maybe you can start flanking around him. Nah, by the time that works, they're going to be dead. Alright, so he actually gains back the health we just gave him from the mind meld, which is unfortunate. But we couldn't have predicted that it would roll a 2. And finally, the Overwatch trap is paying off. <laughs> she can't even see him. Good job, little buddy. Alright, so double Overwatch. He's trying to get on my flank now. Screw you, buddy. I'm not going to let it happen. I'm so very close to getting a flank kill on the little mech, mech melder. Mech mech minder, but uh, not close enough. I'm afraid, not close enough. What are we going to do here? This guy's overwatch is largely trivial because of the flashbang and because I can suppress him. This guy's overwatch is a problem. Because next turn, he's going to possibly be flanking volatile bullfrog. So I need to continue overwatching him for that. And AO is going to need to continue overwatching too. So we're still in kind of a, a cold war here. And that's no good. Nobody likes cold wars. So I think to split this cold war up, I'm going to want to move up. Uh, or maybe even just take the 50% from here. The only other option would be to run and gun to the half cover. And I'm just not really sold on that. I know, it's just awkward. Just My current position is quite awkward to fight in. Let's break out of this cold wall. Let's see what you can do, Drake. Missed. Well, as if we didn't see that coming, you know? Just as well. I don't want to get too close to take a more accurate shot of the shotgun because it's not guaranteed to kill because he's got the damage resistance from the cover. And then, even with suppression, he's going to have such a big aim uh, bonus to hit me that he's still quite likely to hit me. But we'll take our suppression now. Keeping him down, and we'll move up the rookie to cover that mine melder. We're gonna intimidate that mine melder. We're gonna say, hey, don't even think about it. Now on the right, uh, like I said, we're about to be in trouble with Volatile, but we have got a lot of good Overwatch to stop that from happening. So I'm feeling pretty, uh, pre feeling pretty healthy there. We're not gonna take the free shot because if we take a free shot on an Overwatch, we have no ammo for the next shot. 
So we're just gonna chill there. We're gonna chill here. We're gonna intimidate him. Yeah. It's not good to rely on Overwatch this much, but we really need them to make a bad move, and they're doing it right now. This is this is not a good move from them, I don't think. It does make him quite liable to crit my half cover, guys. That's a problem. Let's see what he does with it. No, he overwatches, so yeah, this isn't a great move from them. I'm under fire. So now some very important things have happened here. Uh, perhaps most critical is that we're now capable of killing this sectoid without worrying about the mine melder flanking me the turn that I leave. And you know what? Because of the way the trees work, I think, 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 because of the way the trees work and because of fog, I'm going to be able to walk up to this guy without getting overwatched by that sectoid. But you've got to consider that he can step out, so we're not just being fired from there, we're being fired from there as well. Are we still capable of doing it? Yes, because this giant rock blocks it. So the only real danger we would have is being shot from this angle. Is that a possibility? It would be if I came within fog range at about here. I don't think it's going to happen. I think I've got it in the bag. Heading out. I know my fog, guys. I know my fog. Need a resupply. Overwatch is scary, but when you've got a situation like this where you can clearly see line of sight blockers impeding the aliens, you can make it work for you. Now we'll move up to cover. It's still concerning that he could potentially flank the assault, but I don't- I think it'd be a big long shot. And I can keep him pinned with overwatch, so it's not so bad. Uh, they're still getting very, very antsy with their uh, overwatch bounds here. Our gunner's going to chill because I'm not 100% sure if I can get in the position there. Oh, oh! it should be fine. It'll be okay. We're taking fatigue rest on this one anyway, so the gunner's in a better spot now. Overwatch. 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 Keep doing fuck nothing, you sons of bitches. Actually, this is a good time to use the smoke, because if the overwatches all fail and I get flanked, at least I'm less likely to die. And it gives the infantry two shots next turn, which is always handy. What's the move, sectoids? We're running, we're running. Volatile Bullfrog is missing. That's bad. This one's not going to feel scared anymore. He's going to flank me. I'm really glad I put the smoke out now. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, God. I've got my man on the right still. Come on, come on, get him, get him. Save someone's life today. <laughs> Good job, Hyper Geek, you, you beautiful, beautiful man. And amazingly, as it keeps happening, this is really the kind of situation where you want an LMG. They're just constantly that tile out of goddamn squad site, that, that, that tile out of being suppressed that stops you from suppressing them. But they're that one tile too close uh, to, to move up to overwatch them. Like, look, that's in range. Guys, that's in range. What's going on here? That's stupid. Why is, why is that in range? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and Volatile Bullfrog is still in trouble. I never should have moved Volatile up to this position. It's just been nothing but hell the whole time. God. This is what happens when you don't bring a scout. You get stuck in these really nasty uh, situations. Where you just can't deal with the Overwatch because you haven't got a gunner in range. But we're going to keep moving up. I think I should be able to get around on the... Ooh, I may not want to. I may not want to mess up my flank. 
Oh no, I can still make it. Okay. I'm on the move. We're gonna keep moving around on his left. Ready to engage. Reload that shotgun. Which we could have run and gunned with this turn if we'd had it uh, ready. And we're gonna Overwatch. It's a real uh, tactless Overwatch fight we're having here today. But it's what's on the menu. But there's no one else to freak him out. There's no one else to steal my Overwatch, so uh, he can't really pull that trick twice. Now what I've got here is a scoped shotgun likely to hit on the flank against a sectoid with no way of dealing with the Overwatch unless we move the gunner up. If I move the gunner up just to here, it looks like because I'm flanked, uh, yep, I'm going to be within range. Which is interesting that AO isn't, but Cell will be. That diagonal is really killing me. Regardless, uh, watch this. I'm on the move. Wow, really? Wait. So... I'm flanked. So he can hit me, but I can't hit him. Ah, interesting. Well, I was gonna move up into flanked territory one tile so as not to get overwatch and then suppress him. And then do the running gun, but... Uh, such has not occurred. Moving out. Well, fuck you, Sectoid. You're really just dragging this shit out at this point. You're just being a little son of a bitch now. And I can't even move up on him without getting overwatched. So we just gotta keep chilling. Overwatch. Aye, You're aye. a little son of a bitch, Sectoid. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to fall back to deal with you. You just make it so goddamn hard, don't you? So goddamn hard. Alright. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it right this time. On the move. There you go. Now you're fucked. I'm running low on ammo. Moving to firing position. I'm not wasting my time with your shit any Roger, longer. Roger. Oh, get fucked. Shot failed to connect. Don't let that son of a bitch get away, he's gonna try and run. He is going to try and run. And you need to put him down. Because he's going to make a break for it because he's flanked. I need every hand on deck to make sure he does not get away. Heading to that location. Leave it. This is it, boys. This is your perp. Let's make it happen. A little concerning that my gunner is flanked there. I was really not expecting... Uh, Dismissed to happen. Oh, but Faith and Bagora, I've got a flashbang. You're so boned, you little shithead. You are so boned. So his aim just dropped into very poor territory. And now he's not going to be able to run very far. And we're essentially going to gun him down like a little rat. A little cute gray rat. Run! Run, coward! Run! I hunger! Alright, great. Now, now the rest of the overwatches. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck me, you little son of a bitch. Come back here. You're not getting away from me. You're my kill. You belong to Drake. Everything by the numbers. There you go. So, uh, just like the last UFO mission, uh, it's a pretty easy first half that devolved into a really drawn out last half. But just like last mission, we came out of it okay. Could have handled it differently, maybe fallen back at the end there, but I didn't realize they were just going to turtle me. And hey, everyone got pretty promoted. Cell only rolled six on the wounds. That's fabulous. Uh, so, just like I told you last uh, episode, reference last episode for why I'm taking Flush. Flush, very good. We have got Shotzi Drake. Uh, again, reference last episode for why Corporal Assault is Gunslinger. Uh, and then we've got two tacks and a support. Great times. The only thing that could have happened better is Awo getting promoted, but uh, he was pretty low on XP, so it's no surprise that didn't happen. In fact, if we go to the... No, not you. Uh, where is Cell? Give me Cell. 
Yeah, you can see cell is 74 x... Or was it just... It was 350, I think, to level, isn't it? Yep, so... Cell was barely 24 over the limit. That's why if we taken Renzol, we wouldn't have got that promoted gunner. And that's why I did it that way. So it's good to see my strategy wasn't dumb and was vindicated. So these two small UFOs we've had in April have been really good. Uh, I said of March that the only thing we really failed at was having corporals for April. And those two small UFOs have allowed us to get those corporals. So it's really been like the, the door prize kicker bonus here. Take this and don't feel so bad. Uh, so that's really good. And they're useful classes. Two corporal assaults. That's really good. Corporal infantry, corporal scout. These are all good things to have. A corporal rocketeer is really all I could ask for at this point. Alright, so... We still haven't got the money for the beam lasers. Nothing's changed there. What else was I doing? I was selling the destroyed stuff, that's right. Destroyed power sources. That puts us up to 74 bucks. That'll be a few beam lasers, that's good. Worst comes to worst, we can sell some power cores, but I'd rather not. Let's scan ahead. Let's see what happens. Who's my new troops? Instinct and Radar. Welcome to XCOM. Alright, and we've got an abduction before beam lasers even hit. Commander, um, we're receiving several urgent requests for perfect. assistance. There are abductions in progress at each marked site on the Hologlobe. So one day before beam lasers hit, we're getting uh, a $90 cash influx to buy some beam lasers. Uh, I couldn't have planned it better myself. So, let's prep for this one. It is a moderate in Brazil. This will be our first real tough mission of April. Uh, moderate is, you know, moderate number of pods, that's fine. Uh, but we're going to see Thin Men, Floaters, Seekers, Drones are probably going to be making a comeback. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as these small UFO missions have been. What kind of map are we on? Roadway, yep. This is going to be a fun one, and all our corporals are fatigued, and I don't particularly feel like taking them into exhaustion. Uh, it's all well and good to exhaust a troop for a mission and say just this time, but then that means less troops in rotation, it means you're more likely to need to fatigue troops next time, and eventually, and I, it doesn't seem like it, but I say this from experience, you end up in the third month still with a bunch of people down here in exhaustion because you've entered the exhaustion spiral. So unless you have to, I try to avoid exhausting past the first month. Or unless, of course, it's someone that you know you're not going to need because they're just as good as everyone else. They're just a specialist. But with your good troops, I don't recommend it unless you really need them. Say, for example, a terror mission, a bomb mission, uh, exalt, covert operation. These are the kind of things I would fatigue people for. Uh, and we've got more than enough people to pick from, so let's pick a good team for a roadway here. Okay, so give it to me straight. What do we got here? So it's a roadway map, and uh, looking at the assortment of classes I had to choose from, as well as considering it's a roadway map and we don't have many good troops, we need to kind of think outside the box to make sure we've got the advantage in whatever fight we get pressed into. Now, roadways are long, narrow maps. They often turn into these really nasty back-and-forth firefights where you're stuck in shitty cover shooting at each other. And, you know, when you let luck take the wheel, you're just as likely to get shot as the enemy is. That's not good. We want to make sure the enemy's getting shot and not us. So that's what this squad is kind of built to try and do. We've got two snipers. Two snipers are always a safe bet for a roadway map, obviously. Uh, especially when you've got a seven-size squad, it's a bit easier to fit. With six, I've had to squeeze in some more classes to account for them. But two snipers are pretty, uh, pretty guaranteed not to let us down. I've equipped them with scopes for higher accuracy shots, because that's all they're good for. And they can take the medkits as they're going to be right in the back. 
We have got our infantry uh, with scope and smoke. Infantry is a good class on a roadway because they can shoot and hunker, meaning they can stay uh, active on the front line while still staying defensive. We've got our scout for clearing overwatch, never leave home without one, especially on these kind of maps where, you know, you've got to dash from cover to cover. Uh, it can often be very necessary to have a scout to breach those long uh, areas. And it's someone to bring the shotgun on. I considered taking an assault rifle and a sawn off because of the long engagement ranges of a roadway. But the way I see it, if the scout's not close enough to use a shotgun, she's probably going to be hunkering down. Uh, so I may as well take a full length shotgun that's going to have more range than a sawn off. And then when I get within shotgun range, I'm more likely to make it count. We've got our Rocketeer with the Carbine for increased rocket accuracy, as well as the Scope for increased rocket accuracy. Because roadways are such standoffs, you want things that can break the standoff. And when your snipers can't break a standoff, sometimes all that's left to do is use your rocket. And finally, we've got our Gunner. Now, you've seen I've taken the LMG. We haven't had good luck with the LMG so far in this run. But if there's any map where you're going to want an LMG, it's going to be a roadway map. It's long, it's narrow, cover is sparse. Uh, and you're probably not doing a lot of aggressive assaulting. There's no better place uh, than the wide open sight lines of a UFO map or a roadway to take an LMG to try it out. Uh, we've taken, equipment wise, uh, ceramic on the scout just to make sure she doesn't take any nasty hits when she has to do the overwatch. And a flashbang for when she gets close. We have got uh, smoke on the infantry for the same reasons as last time. The infantry is going to be far back. So the infantry can afford to uh, shoot and smoke. They don't need a flashbang or an AP as much. Uh, you've got the gunner with uh, an AP grenade and a scanner. I would have put a scope on the gunner, but I don't have enough because this, both of the other scopes have to go to the snipers. So instead, I've taken the necessary scanner for seekers on the gunner, as well as an AP grenade. The AP grenade is because the gunner can't move and shoot and doesn't have a pistol. So this is an insurance policy. This is saying absolute worst case... If something horrible happens, the gunner can move and deal damage, and that's important. So I'm pretty comfortable. It's going to be uh, a strategy of allowing the front line to hunker down and tank, while the gunners and two snipers engage and the rocket axes back up, basically. Most of our work is going to be done by the infantry and the scout, tag-teaming to hold the front line and keeping vision for the rest of our squad to engage. Let's see how it goes. Down. All right. Hmm. Brazilian authorities have requested our help, so that's where we're going next. Panic is spreading throughout a major city as the aliens move through the streets. We have to get a handle on this situation. Well, you know, as roadway maps go, this is the least narrow uh, because it turns off in an L, and it's the m it's probably the stubbiest and the shortest. So, it's certainly less suited to our sniper and LMG uh, strategy than other maps, especially because you can get very nasty close contact on spawn if pods spawn inside of the LZ. But, failing that, I think our squad's going to perform well nonetheless. The Rocketeer, Infantry, and Scout are all going to perform well, and the Scout's going to perform better than ever on this smaller map. This CQB roadway, if you will. And I'm quite a fan of this map. I, I, I quite enjoy it. It's an interesting map with quite a few tactical wrinkles to how you play it. So, uh, with an ominous name as ever, join us next time for Operation Black Summer as we take, uh, well, the first real powerful squad we've fielded in a while uh, since the bomb mission uh, down on their first April abduction. Catch you then. Or not. Probably. See ya.